Hey guys, on today's episode, I am heading down to Brooklyn, New York to find a Buick Grand National, one of my favorite cars of all time. It is about 33, 34 years old. And wow. get this, it's got 56 original miles on it. Completely insane. Please, I'm super excited. Down. That and a whole lot more on this episode of Drive Protect. Now that is a driveway. We're gonna stop right here because I have no idea how to get out. Well guys, I think we're here and I believe the Buick is behind that red door, uh, but I'm waiting for the owner. I've actually never seen a drive uh, this tight. Look, I can touch with my hand and my foot at the same exact time, touching the house and I'm touching <laughs> easily. That's how tiny. After heading back and snooping around a bit at the 85 Mazda RX-7, the owner, Eddie, popped out from the basement and nearly gave me a heart attack, and then we opened up the garage door with his sleeping Grand National inside. Wow, just crazy. What an awesome car. The interior looks good though. Yeah, it looks like I'm touched, no? Yeah, I mean, it needs a little work, but like, I mean, nothing yeah, like yeah. I've ever seen before. This is crazy. It's pretty amazing, right? To pull the car out, we first needed to move the Mazda out of the way, which, bravo by the way, very Austin Powers in a golf cart making a U-turn kind of feel, but he made it look easy. Once moved, Eddie showed me a few parts that still had the original tag on them, like the gas tank here, which he took down earlier in the week to inspect, but I really wanted to know what was the story behind finding such a special car with basically zero miles on it. According to the owner, they bought it new, drove it home, and just sat it in the garage till I got my eyes on it. The car belonged to the husband of the lady that I spoke with. He had passed a few years back, and she was always wanting to uh, back to her glory, but she just wasn't able to due to her age and situation, and decided to, it's time to let it go. We take a little video of yeah. my day name? picking up my car. Oh, yeah. Your girl? I just yeah. Said, Have you named her? Did you? Have you named her yet? Not yet. <laughs> GN girl, right? GN girl, right? That's a good one. Well, we're gonna take her out of her slumber. Yeah, so how long she been sitting here now? Thirty years. Thirty. Is that right? That's that's she's an eighty-seven. Thirty-three. Yeah. Thirty-three years. Well, I picked up a trailer, a U-Haul, and I drove from New York City to Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> and I put it on the trailer, me by myself. <laughs> She was too elderly to help me, and I got it on somehow. <laughs> Couldn't believe I did it, but I did get it on the trail on my own. <laughs> and then I brought it back to my home, and where you see her, that's where she's been sitting since I've gotten her. And that was uh, roughly uh, two months ago. To get the Grand National out, we first had to move a bunch of stuff and bring it down off the jack stands. Again, he removed the gas tank in his due diligence process, but obviously this thing isn't going to just fire up anyways. It had all original tires and they all held air, except one, naturally. So pulling an Austin Powers with one flat tire on a much heavier, much longer vehicle that didn't run in the narrowest driveway ever was going to require a third person. Ready? Yeah. It's not now. So Eddie called his son to help push and pull what felt like 20 or 30 times to avoid any bumps or bruises on virgin paint as we ninja'd out of the garage. Eddie, what should I do with my car? Once in the street, we needed to push it up the ramp and over two safety bumps before we could lock it into place. Now, we did all of this with no winch before we locked everything up and headed out of Brooklyn, past New York City, and up to the ammo studio.
After a thorough inspection under our lights, the wheels were dirty, of course, and would require a polish later on. The trunk was 100% immaculate. I mean, absolutely perfect. The paint was dusty and needed minor paint correction for common squirrels. The interior required a light vacuum and more spider removal than anything, while the plastics required a vigorous scrub to remove the early stages of surface mold. Step one was the interior. Dan focused on vacuuming while I cleaned the plastic and vinyl. Before vacuuming under the seats, it's always a good idea to take a quick peek to avoid sucking up anything that might be important without knowing it. In this case, Dan found an original plastic fastener, which sounds insignificant, but it's actually quite important on a car this special and rare. Okay, so one of my favorite things about this car, it is so 80s, it's ridiculous. We have a, a cigarette uh, ashtray in the back, and then of course my favorite thing is the placement of the air conditioning. Check this out. That's sort of directed in a <laughs> a very unique position. I've never seen that before in my life. That's one way to stay cool, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I also love the mechanical mirror adjusters, one on the driver's side door and the other on the dashboard to control the passenger side mirror. Now, the glove box has coin slots for your quarters, dimes, nickels, and all those emergencies when you desperately need a penny. Next, we degrease the engine with APC in our pivot bottles, making life so much easier spraying downwards. Then we agitated the light dust and dirt. Now, surprisingly, we only found one small spot where a mouse could have potentially lived, but really nothing else. Now, this could be because the previous owner had a dog in the garage that may have deterred any mice or rodents, that kind of thing. And we know this because we have some scratches on the passenger side door from a dog most likely jumping or hopping trying to get into the car, which we'll easily remove in the next step. Then I mixed Boost and a bit of Frothy in with the paint foam to give myself the best lubrication I could think of on super soft and black paint. All this was placed into the foam gun. Then I did the same thing for the wash bucket and of course switched to Brute Wheel Soap for the wheel buckets before spraying foam on the old dried paint. While I focused on the wheels and tires that oozed black gunk onto the floor, Dan put two squirts of Brute into a spray bottle of water along with an interior brush to agitate the window frames, emblems, grill, lights, and so on before we washed the paint with microfiber towels and not a standard wash mitt. After rinsing, the GN already looks 100 times better, but the paint is somewhat rough to the touch, so we decided to clay it now before drying it. Now, if you're using a new piece of clay or it's super cold outside, it can be helpful to dunk your clay into warm, but not hot water, to loosen up the material before kneading it and pulling off a small piece to use. Once your clay piece is ready, use the same bucket of soap and a new towel as a lubricant. Squeeze out the soap in one hand and then glide the clay with the other hand. Repeat the process on the rest of the paint as needed. Then rinse again and dry with microfiber towels and compressed air. 
Phase two is paint correction. Now clearly this needs some correction and preservation, but luckily most of the issues are just minor swirls aside from the dog marks we showed earlier. Also keep in mind, there's a healthy amount of factory orange peel that we're purposefully not removing. Here's why. You're thinking to yourself, why don't you just go nuts as I am and just wet sand this entire car, make it look like a perfect Riddler car, show car, that, that kind of concept. Now as a detailer, you sort of have to step back and there's multiple things going on. The first thing is, from a show car perspective, if you were to take an original car, Porsche, Buick, it doesn't matter what it is, and compete in certain classes within concours, you will lose points. You will be deducted points if the car doesn't look original, meaning you flattened it out and you, you didn't uh, leave the orange peel in. So keep that in mind. Again, this isn't being judged, but that sort of preservation mentality is, is kind of the first thing that I keep in mind. The second thing is, from a practical perspective, there's just not a lot of paint left on this car. I don't think that's uh, you know, because it's worn away or anything. That's just from the factory, that's normal. You can see we had about three, three and a half around the car, and inside the door jams is about one and a half too. So I'm really playing with, uh, on a razor's edge, so to speak. So for me to go in and flatten this and make it look amazing, you're not only uh, devaluing the car, especially one like this, and two, you're, you know, the judging factor, okay, maybe that's not a real factor, but three, the most important one is you are running uh, very close to burning through some edges and all of those things combined don't make a whole lot of sense. So we're gonna be using a foam pad, brightening this up, taking away the swirls. I mean, there's swirls everywhere. Just by doing that alone, the car is gonna pop. We're gonna put some protection on it and it's gonna look amazing. Later on, as we became more comfortable with the paint, we increased the aggressiveness of the pad to the Rupes Woe pad from the foam pad, but we kept the same Rupes yellow polish, especially on the passenger side door with all those dog scratches. As you can see right here, the 50-50 came out great. Later that night, we had another delivery for the following day, which was a Celine S7. It was in for some work before it headed down south for some fun driving. <laughs> The next day, we swapped bays to start the paint correction on the Celine later that afternoon, but I had a few leftover spots that I needed to touch up with the Rupes white pad and polish before spending a few hours polishing the wheels. As you can see, they're in desperate need of some love for sure, so I used the Mother's Power Cone with my Milwaukee cordless drill and Flitz Metal Polish to bring them back to life a bit. After the wheels, I applied Ammo Reflex Pro with a microfiber applicator and removed it with a microfiber towel after it rainbowed. Then we worked the windows inside and out, which is always the most overlooked and forgotten, but has the biggest returns or gains for a customer reveal. Once we were done with that, then we finished up with some mud on the tires for protection and we were ready to go. The next morning, Eddie showed up with his trusty U-Haul and his buddy David to help push this thing up the ramp. Wow, Larry. This is incredible. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh totally different. Yeah. Everything on this thing. I can't I can't believe how it looks. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna come out like this. Look at the shine. Like you really brought this back. You took the years off this thing. Oh my goodness. It's back to its deserving 56 miles. Incredible. It's still wet. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Look at this. What's your plans with this thing? Uh, I would love to keep it, but unfortunately, the way things are today, I don't have enough garage space. So I think I'm going to have to sell it, let it go. Let somebody else, you know, maybe a museum take this car, you know? Because yeah. it deserves to be preserved, you know? It's just like I went back to 1987. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. I really appreciate it, Larry. You really feel like a teenager again. Yeah, huh? Incredible. Look at this. Look at this thing. Wow. I'm blown away. 
With all the virtual high fives and bro hugs completed, we now needed to get this thing up on the lift once again without a winch. Attempt number one was a fail. Attempt number two was a huge bust. So then we moved the trailer to a downhill slope and pushed the car out onto the street, then used the momentum to go up the ramp, which almost worked, but then we just literally muscled it up and we got it over the last bump and away he went. And that's a wrap. So we're here, finally finished the service. I'm super excited to see if this thing will start for the first time. We changed the flu all the fluids, changed the fuel tank, fuel pump, cleaned out the, uh, the fuel system, and um, put a new battery in it. So here we go, first time. 30 years. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, I hear the fuel pump. How does it feel reliving the 80s? This is what it's all about. A brand new car, counting 56 pounds. Incredible. Look, no smoking. Oh my god, this is incredible. Okay, look, well, the lights are working. Wow, she sounds beautiful. Oh my goodness, bro. I'm so happy. Well, Eddie, I think you may have outdone yourself with this car. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks, bro. This is incredible, bro. This is like going back to 1987 when I was a kid. <laughs>